Hello, Matt here again. In this video, I'll teach you my 13 best tips for macro photography. Now, before I freeze to death, let's see for that. Hello, wait a minute. Why is a portrait photographer telling me about macro? What does he know about macro? It's a good question. Even though most of what I put on social media is portraiture, before I discovered portraits, my main genre of photography for many years was macro. And during the kind of strange times we're in with lockdown at the moment, it's given me the opportunity to get back into my macro photography. This video will hopefully get you started in terms of equipment required for macro photography, things like macro lenses, tripods. Now before I freeze to death, um, it looks sunny but um, it's actually quite cold. I'm not wearing flip flops. <laughs> Part two of this video is tips and tricks on how to improve your macro photography. I'm trying to think where to start, there's so many options. Okay, I'll say I'll keep saying macro photography, but that doesn't need to be like mini school macro, it can be anything this close to this close. We'll call macro photography. So on normal cameras, just to quickly recap, you can use first choice macro lenses. If you've got one already, second choice standard lens with extension tubes. So it's the same idea as this. You're just putting stacks of tubes between your lens and your camera body. The more tube thickness between the camera and the lens the more magnified you get so you tend to buy extension tubes in sets of three on eBay probably less than 20 pounds normally a set of three with three different thicknesses and then if you want more magnified, you put all three together. I used to use this and I'll include some of my macro, old macro images at the end of this video. Option three, macro filter. Just a clip on the camera. These fit all camera lenses. You just need to get one that's the right diameter. Option four is a weird one. basically get a lens, get a camera. So here's your camera, here's your lens and what you do is you buy an adapter and mount it this in reverse like this. See your lens is on totally backwards and what reverse mounting in a lens does, it makes it crazy crazy macro. So you can like take it like, I don't know, an ant's eyeballs. Um, I did used to do like spider pictures and bug pictures. I can include some um, samples. I tend to do two types of macro photography. You can do shooting the lens wide open, say uh, f2, f2.8, if you've got a flash lens, and then going for the really crazy bokeh balls and the nice background. So the option one is shoot your lens wide open meaning you'll have a super super shallow depth of field and then hopefully a pleasing background and option two is shoot at like f22 on a tripod with speed lights and so everything is like crazy detailed um, normally with a black background unless you flash light the background as well because otherwise it'll be too dark so two options depending on what you like. You can stop the lens right down for greater depth of field and very very sharp images. We can have the lens wide open to have a shallow depth of field and the blurry nice soft background. I guess that's the two styles I do. You can probably work somewhere in between and have like f5.6, f5.8. Obviously the bigger your f number Greater your depth of field plane, meaning the more you'll get in focus. Now, talking of in focus, 
don't know if you can see that in the background. If the subject is this flower, <coughs> let's show from the side. If I'm taking a picture like this of this flower, if I want the maximum amount of the face of this flower to be in focus, I need to match the plane of the, the angle of the lens with the angle of the flower. So if the flower's like this, I need to be like this. If the flower's like this, I need to be like this. If I shoot like this, you'll have that tiny edge in focus and then all the rest will be soft. Maybe that's what you want. If you want to shoot like this, again, you can only have either this or the side of the, kind of underneath of the flower. If you want the whole face of the flower, you need to shoot flat on to the flower. So, if, you, if the flower is obviously in the ground, you take a picture like this. That allows you to get more of the flower in focus, even with a wide aperture. Lighting is a big one. Now, I need to do a review on the lights that I use. In the old days, I used to use speed lights. And I still use, still do use speed lights, but um, they tend to be a bit too powerful uh, on occasion for this type of photos I was trying to create. So what I do is I use um, LED light panels. for pretty much everything I do. Models, video lighting, obviously not now, and even macro photography. So I need to do a review on the video lights. Lighting is key. So if you don't have any sunshine, you make your own light. And I brought this out as an example. This is a bit of um, mirrored pers perspex from eBay. Sometimes I use it for models, you can see it on my face. And sometimes I use it for kind of um, product photography. Now, the closer it is to your face, to the subject, the more effect it's going to have. So, these are really good for macro photography. Because you can work in daylight, you don't need any batteries or any heavy stuff to carry around. So, if here is our flower, and then I can't really see what's up on the screen. But depending on where the light is, you'll see it light up differently. So these are really useful. It lets you create kind of side lighting. So really important lighting. It doesn't need to be this. You can use silver foil from um, your kitchen. You can use the barbecue uh, metal aluminium trays. You can use a white piece of cardboard if you want a more subtle effect. You can shoot handheld if you've got a, lots of light and a careful hand. Or you can use a tripod which makes it easier. And if you really, if for example you're outside and you're trying to do really fine detail 
uh, macro photography sometimes it's much if I'm talking about nature at the moment if you want to do if you've got one particular flower where's it gone I've lost my one flower if you have one flower like this as long as you're not going around the countryside picking all the actual wildflowers you can take this into a studio clamp it and then there will be no wind in the studio so it's a much more stable environment to get everything super sharp and how you want it talking about the extra details this is another great tip you can see it next to my body this is a standard water spray so if you want to add a bit of extra effect to your flower obviously normally it would be in, the, in your garden or whatever spray it and then I don't know if you can see the little water droplets gives a bit more detail And it's just an extra kind of um, extra detail. <laughs> it just adds something extra to your to the photos that you're looking at. In the past, I used to do kind of true macro photography rather than just close-up photography. So I used to do like water droplet photos. So I'd literally make a water droplet and then photo a droplet with a picture refracted into the water droplet. So that's proper macro photography in terms of really close. What I tend to be talking about now is more close-up photography, but you can do anything. If you want to do water droplet, phot water droplet photography, you can put glycerin because glycerin is thicker than water. And so the droplets will stay on the side of the plant or whatever you're looking at for longer. And then you can do all sorts of crazy stuff. I'll include some quick um, images, but bear in mind they were taken like 10 years ago when I was starting out with my photography, so it um, might not be the best. So we've covered lighting, we've covered what aperture you're going to use, we've covered if you can use a tripod or not use a tripod. You can use water sprays to add extra detail, you can use And I'm going to forget something. Background, right, okay. One thing I forgot to mention, or one thing I wanted to mention, which I haven't yet mentioned, is background. Background is really important for macro photography because if you want a nice blurry background, you need to pick your background to look blurry. So, I've lost my flower again. Lost my flowers, I've got a dead one. Right, if for example, if you can see these logs, if you're, I want to do it this way, if, here, if this is your wall and this is your flower, you're not going to get a shallow depth of field because the wall is really close to your flower. If you do it that way, so if this is the flower, if this is your subject, this is the background, you're going to get very minimal background subject separation. If you have your background miles away and then focus the fl flower close to your lens then you'll have good um, background separation and you'll have nice pleasing bouquet. Now what would be the case most of the time is because you're focusing so close to the subject the background can be completely mush anyway you'll just see blur so then what you need to decide is what type of blur do you want in the background If I shot over here, for example, you'd see the flower, not very good flower, and then this would be black. You'd pretty much see, you would pretty much see nothing in the background. If this was illuminated, there's not much light left. 
if this was illuminated and I shot this way, I'd have purpley yellow splotches in the background. And all it is, is just by changing the angle of the lens a tiny amount, if I point one way, it might have a white brick wall or a wooden fence background. And if I tilt the camera just a tiny bit, because it then goes where there's a um, green plant in the background, you then have plants in the flower in the front and green in the background, which makes it kind of really lush, kind of everything's nice and green and fresh looking. Whereas if you have a flower in the front, and a brown fence in the background. It's not so exciting to kind of look at. So background is really important. So you've got to look at um, things to probably think about is angle of the camera to angle of the flower. Angle your front of the camera. Where's my camera? <laughs> angle the front of the camera to the plane of where you want the focus. So if your plant is upright like most flowers and you want to photograph the stalk. Photograph straight on. If you photograph on an angle you'll only have a tiny strip of the stalk in focus. And And then above it and below it will be blurry and then turn your camera to where you see the background looks pleasing um, I'll include some examples because it's easier than trying to explain it or sitting on the floor I'm probably going to forget something but That's some basics to kind of get you started. Okay, I think that's it. Um, something a bit different because normally I photograph portraits. But um, as we're in lockdown at the moment and I can't photograph people, I thought I'd um, show you my photography style that I used to do before portraits. I've been using 4x5 cameras for macro photography. I've been using roller, roller cord. I've used a Haspad H2. Um, Leica cameras, film, film Leicas, digital Leicas, uh, Lumix Micro Four Thirds camera, which um, Nikon SLR cameras, pretty much everything. Any camera will do macro more or less, apart from kind of, I don't know, obvious examples of cameras less that won't do it are folding range finder cameras. That's kind of your worst option. But, um, 
pretty much everything else is pretty good with some adaptation. Okay, short video became long video as usual. So thanks for watching. Hope you found it useful. Um, any questions that I missed, please stick them in the description in the comments below and I'll um, answer them as soon as I can. Thanks for watching.